welcome to our last program from Crufts 98. Today we'll be looking back to more of the best of the toy, utility and the gundog groups. We'll also be seeing the agility final. More of the obedience. But first we go to the fun of the final of Flyball. And we start with the third and fourth place playoff. That's the Rugby Reds nearest the camera against the Watford Bouncers in the lilac colours. Looking at the first dog from Watford. As usual, four dogs in each team. Best of three runs to count. Each of the dogs, of course, has to jump the hurdles and return with a ball, which they collect from the fly ball box. Beautifully taken there. Second dog for Rugby. It's tight, but Rugby are now opening up a lead. And that's another good take. Rugby were very unlucky not to get into the final itself. And they're going to prove the point here. This is a very clear win in the first leg. Rugby really with a point to prove, and they're moving very quickly, and they're very accurate. That's a lovely catch there. These old-fashioned flyball boxes we're using, rather than the speed boxes that they use for major competitions. Second leg now. Can rugby take third place? Well, Watford bouncers dropped the ball. Rugby have already pulled out a lead. It's lovely blue Merle dog going second. Good catch. There is some discussion that uh, this box can be a little bit dangerous because the dogs do throw themselves at it, but it's certainly spectacular. Last dog going for rugby. They're clearly in the lead. Unfortunate for Watford, but the team from the Midlands, rugby, take third place. Beautiful run out. Nice stop there. Watching the ball. Good jump. The final then was between the pack, that's Packington outside Solihull, and Belisha Beacon from Streetly. The pack are on the far side. Belisha Beacon nearest the camera. And immediately a mistake by the Belisha Beacon team. The pack going out into the lead. Not a border collie, as you see there. And any variety. Well, you can run any dogs you like in these teams. Mostly it's border collies because they're quickest. And this is a good run out. Sometimes, of course, we see the, the working sheep dogs as well. The pack in the lead, but they won't be now. That was a mistake, and it's cost them. Look at that. Oh, that's close. Alicia B can take it. First leg to them. Unfortunate, the dog just missed the catch. Very quick on recovery, but not quick enough. Losing out by about five yards. Second leg then. This must be won by the pack, otherwise Belisha Beacon win the title. And the pack are in the lead. They do seem quicker. Good catch there, but it's just about neck and neck. I think in the semi-finals, actually, uh, Belisha Beacon weren't very quick, but they're very accurate. That was a wonderful catch, and they've opened up a lead. Last dog going. This is the finishing run. That's it. That's it. Belisha Beacon take the title. Oh, and aren't they pleased? This team from Streetly win the Flyball Championship. Yes, it's all good fun, isn't it? Well done. So the placings in the end. First, Belisha Beacon. Second, the pack. Third, Rugby Reds. Watford Bouncers. Fourth. Our next lot of dogs may not be as fast, but they're certainly as much fun. Here's some more of the breed winners from the Toy Group. The Toy Group at Crufts 1998 was judged on Saturday, and this year it was David Stroud doing the honours. This rich Blenheim Cavalier King Charles Spaniel is called Hadley, Stormtrooper by Del Hayes. He's two years old and will have delighted owners Eddie and Hazel Edwards by winning his third challenge certificate and gaining his crown at Crufts. He was bred by Maggie Clayton. What delightful little Spaniels these are, Jess. They really are Spaniels, aren't they? The perfect temperament for a companion, the only defect being a tendency to have to fight the flab because those gentle eyes seduce their owners into parting with all too many titbits. They need regular attention to their coats, especially behind those very expressive ears. And they have the advantage of having those lovely full-length tails. Smashing little dogs. 
Another newly crowned champion, this is Amalek's sophisticated lady, Bonnie, a young English toy terrier bitch owned, bred and handled by Mary Wilson from Oakhampton in Devon. Something of a contrast to the Cavalier, the hallmark of the breed are those candle flame shaped ears, very upright. It's a wedge shaped head, but not snivy. Graceful neck, finely boned legs, ending in those dainty compact feet. Difficult to get the perfect movement because they trot extended, not in a hackney fashion, and this is doing it dead right. For the second year running, Shuji, or champion Vival Shuji Tamura, tops the Japanese chin entry for owner breeder Chris Tappenden, who hails from my neck of the woods near Salisbury in Wiltshire. Apparently, Shuji stamps his feet for his titbits. Oh, well, as long as he gets the titbits, he's all right, isn't he? It's a clever combination of aristocracy with cheek, that face, renowned for the flashes of white in the inner corners of the eyes. Fair size of skull for a dainty dog, which shouldn't weigh any more than three kilograms, even with that cobby-looking chest. Very stylish chap, quite convinced of his own importance, as most toys are. And a wonderful profuse coat there, too. Now, a duckling that turned into a swan is how John and Josie Mann describe their little papillon bitch, Sarah, or champion Greycaz Serendipity, who was bred by Caroline Lee Farnsworth. She's just two years old and already has seven challenge certificates. It's a breed that comes to the top of the toy pile at a great number of shows, and rightly so, because it's one of the soundest built of all toys. Very intelligent, can be trained up to a remarkable stand of obedience, those heavy fringes to the ears are another speciality, so Mistress Sarah's got the whole lot going for her. Their judge this year, incidentally, took one through to reserve best in show at the 1991 Crufts. Bert Easton and Philip Martin are no strangers to the Crufts group ring for a start. Bert was handling this little Pekingese in the toy group at Crufts last year where they took group two. Champion St. Sanja Grand Finale at Yaki is now three years old and was bred by Barry and Anne Ophelia. And the Yaki Kennel gives us, time after time, the best in show as far as peaks are concerned. We know about Peter's liking for peaks. I have to go along with him over this chat, splendid head and expression, but also because his dignified and purposeful progress round the ring really looks as if he could enjoy a walk in the park or even to the supermarket. A nice dog. Jan's Clan Dark Crusader Per Pugini, or Nino for short, is a 22-month-old black pug dog belonging to Pat Ruffini and bred by Mrs. Phillips. Nino won his second challenge certificate today, so only one to go for his championship. Well, there's a thing. Proper bit of pomp and circumstance here. It's not often these days that we see a black pug of this quality. There used to be plenty in the 50s. Proud expression, strong legs, cobby chest and level top line with that natty high set twist of a tail. Really rather splendid, isn't he? They make very popular pets, don't they? Because they've got such lovely natures too. So we're down to six, but who would David Stroud's final four be? He perused his line up for a little and then went over to the Maltese. Winning the toy group for 1998 and a totally stunned owner, champion Sabrador Whitetail Express, Teddy, owned by Greta Franklin. And it's her first show dog, so you can understand why she was looking so pleased. Into the reserve spot, group two, the Italian Greyhound, champion Florita Favolosa, Luisa, a nine-year-old bitch owned and bred by Helen Lister. Group three went to David Stroud's own breed, the Yorkshire Terrier, champion Verilan out of the blue, Weenie, own bred and handled by Veronica Sameja Hilliard. And into group four, the final spot, Dorothy Entwistle's little smooth-coated Chihuahua, Dorenti's knock'em dead Norman, getting a real kiss and a cuddle there. But going forward to the competition for Crufts 1998 Best in Show, well, from the toy group, it's the Maltese, champion Sabrador Whitetail Express for Greta Franklin. What a day for them. They think he's not very good because he isn't well behaved. But every time, if you be, if you be slow, he'll go. He'll be very good, and he'll let you do the. T he'll let you do the tea. But if you push in like this, he won't like it. They're lovely. They're so sweet. Oh, puppy, puppy. It's all the dogs. I mean, there's so many different.
The Bitches Obedience Competition was held on Friday here at Crufts, and here's a reminder of the tests. The first is the retrieve, and appropriately enough, the Bitches were after a fluffy pink toy. Take it. Then there'll be some challenging heel work to do. The send away, the dogs sent away from the handler to drop on command in a designated spot. Distant control, a sequence of commands to be obeyed, of course, at a distance. The two minutes sit and the ten minute down stay, a real test of obedience in the Crufts big ring. There are so many distractions. And finally, the scent test. Pick out the judge's cloth only. So what are our expert Sandy Wadham's tips for the top? Definitely Karina with Ginty, Kim Innes with Heidi, and Catherine Gillard with Zola, which is a super little dog. Let's start by taking a look at that retrieve. This is Sylvia Bishop, an obedience champion, It's a Kind of Magic, the 25th consecutive year that Sylvia's qualified a dog to work at Crufts. An incredible achievement and a lovely retrieve, losing just three quarters of a point. Take it. Finish. Now, this is one of Sandy Wadham's tips. Catherine Gillard with obedience champion Zulmarg Zola. A near-perfect retrieve, this. The best of both the dog and the bitch competitions. Take it. Finish. Beautiful. Just and a proud owner, too, I'm sure. Let's stay with Catherine and Zola in the heel work. Sandy describes this as superb, accurate and flowing. She's a real pleasure to watch, isn't she? Just five and three-quarter points lost in this performance. Out to me. Janet Oliver now with obedience champion Corrie Collie's Jessie. Lovely to watch this. Not as accurate as Zola, but so keen and stylish. Eight and a quarter points lost. Karina Griffiths, an obedience champion, Ginty at Carjon. Now nice smooth heel work, dropping just eight and a half points. Second position coming. Now. Really precise. A German Shepherd, obedience champion Ashlu and Charisma Kid with Kim Innes, another of Sandy's favourites. But Kim Thanks went the wrong way round the weave, a costly mistake in the end, seven and three quarter points lost. Obedience champion Runfold Okaya is a border collie handled by a rather tense June Stenning. This bitch is nicknamed Thanks, Sweet girl. Sue and she's certainly trying to please Thank her mum. Dog. Now, fast pace can cause some dogs to lose accuracy, and obedience champion Jellystone Jolly is making handler Barbara Smith work for her competition. They lost seven and a half points. About turn. Obedience champion Jenna Bacab Instinct and Stephanie Woolham, they lost only four and a half About points, turn. the best heel work of the day. Really relaxed and natural About team, turn. this. The send away, and again, it'll be the confident dogs who aren't intimidated by the direct stare of those collie markers. Those will be the ones that'll score. This is a good send away from Janet Oliver and obedience champion Corrie Collie's Jesse. Nice and alert to that pickup. A fast dog, isn't she? Left turn. Now, what a name. Julie Strickleton is handling Shucks It's Mine. But she does a lovely send away. Uh oh, she does lose points though when she decides to play hide and seek. Right turn to me forward. <laughs> Much to the amusement of the crowd here at Crufts. Distant control. When this test is done well, it's quite wonderful to watch. And this team, obedience Three. champion Jellystone Jolly and handler Barbara Smith, hit Four. the spot just right. Perfect. Five. This brings them back into contention, I should think. Return to your dog. Obedience champion Jenna Bacab Instinct ready to go. But, turn but Stephanie hasn't even opened her mouth and she's anticipated the first position. Three points lost and will that affect their chances? Two. 
the stays. A mass of handlers abandoning their dogs for a two-minute sit-stay. But Okaim Bardo has other ideas. Her neighbours did well not to be distracted. And she gets a cuddle anyway. The downstay, a more relaxed affair. Well, for some. And oh dear, Bardo's off again. Go and talk to the audience. Anything other than a downstay, much to the dismay of owner Jean Everest. She's going to curry favour with the judge now. <laughs> Our current leader, though, a paragon of virtue. So, Stephanie Willems in the lead with obedience champion Jennifer Cab Instinct, but there are others hot on her tail. And on to the scent test, the final test. Two decoys will be placed first. And that last cloth, well, that's the judge's cloth. And, of course, it's the target for Jinty. Currently lying in second place. Will they get a good scent test? Can you dog? Going out to work those cloths. Oh no, that's the wrong one. Huge disappointment for Karina Griffiths. Jinty fails the test, loses 50 points, and he's out of the competition. Now, three quarters of a point in the lead at this stage. Obedience champion Jennifer Gab, instinct, keen to get on with the job. Must be a nervous moment for Stephanie Willem. But that's the right cloth and just one point loss for this team, giving them a total of Thank 13 you. points. Finish. Touch finish. Excellent. Now what that means is that if the next dog up, obedience champion Zolmarg Zola, can pull off a perfect scent test, she can win this competition. If she loses a quarter of a point, she'll tie Thank for you. first place. Half a point lost and she's in second, the same as last year. An awful moment for Catherine Gillard. Ah, a bit of hesitation, but Zola has got the right cloth. Take it. Finish. Yeah. Wonderful. Just finished. And relief all round, but now it's just a question of seeing what those points calculations are going to come to. How much is she going to lose? Wait for it. You could say that again. Get the calculator out. Oh, no, it is half a point, and that means that they go into second place for the second year running, but taken with great grace. So the 1998 Bitch Championship here at Crafts goes to Stephanie Woolham and obedience champion Jennifer Cab Instinct, with Zola going into second place, Jellystone Jolly in third, obedience champion Runfold Okaya in fourth, and bringing up the rear, Tessa Baby. Very exciting stuff there. Our next group of dogs doesn't fit easily into any of the other five groups. They were bred to carry out a variety of different tasks. So here's some more breed winners from the utility group. For me, this really was the most sparkling of the groups at this year's show. 24 breeds, which don't easily fall into the other groups, came under the eye of Monica Bozier Black, the utility group judge. And each of the dogs in this group really did seem to want to show. And this little Boston Terrier was no exception. One of the sparkliest, I think. Antrix Silver Joey. It's a two-year-old bitch owned by Mrs. Kennedy from Peterborough. And I think that that head is gorgeous. You're dead right. It's the national dog of America, of course. And it's very pleasant to see such a striking UK representative as they really aren't particularly strong over here. That head, as you said, was very smart in its markings. For me, he's got a correct chunky neck and shoulder into a deep body which is not too chunky he also moves well which isn't always the case in our Boston's I love the way he throws his ears back as he goes he's now pushed them forward he's lovely two-year-old dr. Fox by salsa paddy for short is owned by Sandra and Samantha Stanton from well in Garden City Samantha is the handler now, Paddy's grandmother was actually best to breathe here in 1992, and her grandfather was in 1993, keeping it in the family, as it were. Indeed. Now, this isn't a particularly heavy dog for the breed. He's beautifully balanced, both standing and on the move. 
He's only two year old, you say? So yep. he's got quite a lot of time to mature. And Dallies are amazingly capable of going on and on and on into their teens, still as sound in body as ever. There are some, of course, who will doubt that they're ever mature enough to become sound in mind. <laughs> <laughs> That's How unkind. <laughs> now, I tell you, I adore this little bitch. Liz Dunhill's top-winning Shiba Inu champion, Vormund, I'm Smarty. She's six years old, is the first of the breed to win a Best in Show at an All Breeds General Championship show, and Smarty is just one of the many dogs of different breeds that Liz has made into champion. She's a wonderful breeder and a wonderful handler, and that's a smashing dog. It is indeed. There are those who refer to this breed as a sort of miniature Akita, but I see him as a fascinating breed in his own right. Amazing to think, Peter, that his first appearance at Crufts at all was only in 1991, when the show first moved here to the NEC. This lad was born in 1992 and has had typical hooded ears, plush coat, smasher. Champion Dargrant Dressed to Kill, who is four, answers to the name of Bradley. He's been the top winning Kazon for the past two years, was top puppy back in 1995. Owner Jim Blackburn, who keeps him in Gedling, Nottingham, says that Bradley decides at 11 at night that it's time for bed, and nothing after that is fun until he's had his sleep. Well, I believe that. Does that sound like a Kazon to you, Mike? It does indeed. I've lived with the Blighters since 1947, and I've had dogs that do that. They go off to bed and they say, you can shove off and leave me alone. I really rate this chap. He's one of the best dogs we've seen in the breed in the last decade, and he's still only three and a half. Lovely contrast of colour, a sound body and a swinging way of going. Thoroughly well presented by a very experienced handler. Recently, we've seen some lovely miniature schnauzers in the group. Here's another, champion Minivale Mystic Meg. Meg is only 22 months old, lives just up the road in Binley Woods in Coventry with the Parnells. Carol Parnell actually is handling. Carol reckons that Meg is very mischievous and better looking than the other Mystic Meg. I'm not going to argue with that. Well, who would? It's a very neat bitch with a very natty name. Lovely head and whiskers, intelligent as a breed, always looking as sharp as a tack. Very terrier-like in appearance in that harsh pepper and salt jacket. And as you say, he didn't have to travel far from home in Coventry. Quite capable of walking here from the vigorous way she moves. Not too sure whether a handler might have fancied arriving on Shanks' <laughs> pony. And the toy poodle, champion Valletta love affair. He's really four-and-a-half-year-old Arthur, owned by Valerie Dunn from Newport in Gwent, and it's her sister, Susan Bayliss, who's the handler in the ring. It's a little dog with lots of wins to his name, 41 cc's, would you believe? And he's been best of breed no less than 34 times. That's what 40 years of exhibiting can do for you. What a record. A real mighty atom of a dog, very typical of poodles in general, with real balance and a very confident way of moving. The striking amount of reach in front for one so small. I thought he might have made the final cut in the group, but it wasn't to be. But I'll guarantee that's a very happy owner with a very charming dog indeed. Absolutely lovely. It was touch and go, really, whether the group would go to the Japanese Akita or the Chow Chow. But in the event, Monica Boja Black decided that the 16-month-old Taosha says the mistress share the Chow Chow had the edge. And I don't think anyone would grumble at that. A delightful bitch that got better and better every time you looked at her. And for the reserve for the group, Dave Killerley's wonderful, magnificent Akita Rave. This is a dog he actually sold to Norway, made it up into a Norwegian champion and then bought it back for this triumph today. And Group 3 went to Marita Rogers, beautiful standard poodle, Denzel. And in fourth place, Harry Jeff Korish's Larsa Apso. Well deserved. So that's the utility group, five groups down, one to go. And it's the Chow Chow that goes through for best in show. Scotland to Cornwall, you know, they, this is the show people travel to. Normally, most people only travel two or three hours, but if it's crust, that doesn't matter, they travel any distance. Yeah. There's an idea over there with a hairy thing who's come from Northampton, <laughs> he's got a five hour drive home. We'll be home I think in two she hours. means it's a vet and terrier, by the way. Now the action really hots up as we reach the final stage of the agility competition.
in yesterday's program, the first two rounds of this final left us with this situation, with Bretford Dog Training Society just holding a very small time advantage over Wellow and District Dog Training Club. Burridge Dog Training Club were third, Derbyshire Dog Agility Club were fourth. And it's Derbyshire that we see first. Kay Cope, who's a legal secretary from Stone in Staffordshire, with her dog Fern, actually called Fire of Furnace, four-year-old working sheepdog, English Springer Cross. Interestingly, this club, they were only formed in May last year, early May, and by the end of May, they had qualified for Crufts. Remarkable achievement. One, go. And Kay says that uh, Fern here isn't the fastest dog in the world, but certainly her best. It's doing well so far. Good control. As usual, all of these obstacles have to be taken in a particular order. The red points are contact points that the dogs must make if they don't they'll be penalized the judge Neville Watson one, one. it's a good run but there are a couple of faults in there the total faults for the team 25 10 of them came in this round and there's one of them as the dog missed the contact point on the a-frame Burridge Dog Training Club next Linda Day is a biochemist from Southampton the dog is Kizzy nine and a half years old Kizzy Cola Third time Kizzy's been to Crofts, including the team final Down. last year. Down. 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 Five second hold there, just to prove that you have control over your dog. Don't let the dogs go willy-nilly after all these obstacles just charging on round. They have to be controlled. Linda Day controlling pretty well, but there comes a bar down. Picking up faults. The dogs do get very keen in here. They work so well. I'm, I'm amazed they do it without being distracted. Big crowd. Total team faults, 10. Five of them here. There it goes. This is Kai. Kai is five years old. It's a crossbreed. Kerry Lynch is the handler, technical specialist from Southampton. The team is Wello. Kai was actually a rescue dog from the RSPCA, which uh, Kerry got four years ago. And she says he's a real mummy's boy. Shame coming off the table there. That just takes time. I doubt if there's a penalty, but uh, we'll wait and see. I love seeing these dogs. They're so vocal when they're working. They're having fun. Agility is a huge sport in this country. There are thousands of people that take part in it. And we're watching the cream of the cream here. Least favourite obstacles for this pair are the contact points, but they don't seem to have made any mistakes on them. That's a good round, 46.64. Five faults, though, so it must have been the table because it certainly wasn't there. Next to go for Bretford Dog Training Society, Lucy Lastic, this working sheepdog, eight and a half years old, with Steve Baldwin, 11th time at Crufts. Oh, what a mistake there, the beam's off. Five faults at least. And this side Steady. have gone clear Down. so far, Down. but now Three. they've got Down. faults. Two. So time is going One. to be important, I guess. Go. Come here. In fact, at this moment, I think they're level with Wello, and time will be the deciding factor. Back, 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 Very back. experienced, though, as I've said. Oh. And believe it or not, this dog come. is the oh. only one, we'll I think, ever to have appeared in both the Agility come. Team Final, come. Championship back. Obedience, and Flyball back. in the same year at Crafts. A remarkable achievement. Steve making sure that they're accurate and they're going to be in the time, are they just? Yes, just beating 49 seconds, that's good. Just the five faults. So at the end of that third round, Wello and District have now taken the lead on time over Bretford with Burridge with 10 faults and Derbyshire bringing up the rear with 25. It's all, right. to the left. all to play for in the final round and it's Derbyshire going first this new team to this sport done so well to get here this is Nan with Pam Copley who's a sales assistant from Derby Nan is a working sheepdog three years old down, down. four three two one go Nan. Nan's a sweetheart that talks too much says Pam Last year, the very first year in agility. Go 
the enthusiasm this team's got, and they brought such a lot of supporters here with them. This dog likes all the obstacles, no question about that. And that's very fast, 44.93, and it's a clear round. The team have 25 faults, but Pam and Nan went clear. Burridge Dog Training Club now. Leslie Olden, who's a bank clerk from Romsey. The dog's called Nat. It's a working sheepdog, six years old. Second time for Nat at Crufts. Four. Three. Two. One. Go. We asked Leslie which are her favourite or least favourite obstacles. She says, actually, she likes them all. The dog likes them all, that is, as long as Leslie gets them right. It's so good listening to these words that they use. They all have different techniques for controlling the dog, but this is good. Are we in for another clear round here? It is clear, and it's another fast one, 44.62. The team hold on with just 10 faults. Bretford then, with Graham Whale. Comes from Coventry. The dog's called Heather, 11 years old. Just shows these dogs go on forever, don't they? Steady, table. Down! Down. Four. Flat. Three. Flat. Flat. Two. Flat. One. Flat. They held the go. lead for the first two rounds, Steady. of course. Desperate now to Control. take the lead Control. again. Control. If they can go clear here, go. they will put all the pressure onto the last team to go, Wello Dog Trading Club. Bretford won it here last year. Steady. They want White. to win Control. it again. Down. Two. This is neat. He's a very good handler. Third consecutive Crufts appearance, fifth in total. Graham Whale and Heather. It's clear, I think, in 46.82. The pressure really is now on Wello. That was a terrific run. She sure is a beauty. So what can Wello do? Kay fares here with Geisha. Kay is a retired medical representative, and now she's a dog trainer groomer. Whoops, and that's very frenetic. Crash, oh, and the fault. It's all over. I think that means that Bretford have got it. Oh, she'll be so disappointed. You do have to control these dogs. Just control that natural exuberance, because if you don't, they'll make the mistake. Border Collie, five years old, first time at Crufts. But have competed several Steady times right. in obedience here. This is so fast, but unfortunately, accuracy is the important thing in agility. There might have been another fault, missing a contact point there coming off. Well, the dog's as happy as can be, yes. Ten faults now. What a shame. Confirmation then of the result. Bretford Dog Training Society win with only five faults. Wellow and District Dog Training Club second. Burridge third. Derbyshire are fourth. And interestingly, Derbyshire, who were fourth, put up the fastest time. Time for the last of our groups now. These are the dogs bred to work in the field. They're intelligent, steady and reliable. The gun dogs. <laughs> Twenty-seven gun dogs out of almost 5,000 original entries came into the main ring to contend the group, and Mrs. Hilda Parkinson was the judge. Again, this proved to be a very high-caliber group, and the Italian Spinoni was certainly impressive. Kiki, or champion Roscali Lucilla at Letirios, is four and a half. She's owned by Lisa Mackadam from Kislingbury in Northamptonshire, and Kiki is her first show dog, so you can imagine the delight to be in this position today. What a triumph. It's an unusual breed, isn't it, by anybody's standards, with his very solid build and slightly dipped top line. It's got a very patient temperament, which is one of the reasons why I imagine it's gained steadily in popularity since first landing here from Italy. That tough, wiry coat presumably keeps her waterproof. It certainly keeps her warm. The official gate standard says she should be relaxed on the move. She certainly was. 
The pointer is the group judge's speciality. Show champion ad stock Jacobite, Jack, is six years old. His daughter actually won the reserve CC today as well. Donna and Ted McDougall breed their dogs in Fakenham, Norfolk. They have a field trial champion and two other show champions at home. And Jack here is a real hater of hot air balloons. I don't blame him. My newfies are as well. What a story. And what a spectacular fellow. All clean lines and clean angles. Already six years old, but swings around the ring with style and panache as if he was still a junior. But then, of course, Peter, you can expect that when your owner and handler is a vet. The group <laughs> judge cut her teeth breed breeding pointers, so she will have appreciated this character, as you rightly said. A smashing dog. There are five different retrievers. This is the flat coat version. Tiger Moth at Keeper's End. Oliver, in fact, he's six. Handled today by Jan Eggington and owned by Angela and David Miller from Newark. They've only shown dogs for six years, but kept them for more than 30. They say Oliver's a very clever fellow. He can open every door in the house and has a lovely temperament. He looks as though he has. He does. Flat coats always seem to have those super temperaments, and this lad's certainly no exception. They also have a great ability to last, as was demonstrated in the two veteran classes, where I noticed that there were no fewer than seven full champions and four show champions, and that's lasting for you. It's a true combination of shining elegance and working practicality, a real gun dog. There were 533 goldies entered, yet Stanroff's schoolboy, the winner, is only 19 months old, came out of the special yearling class. Scholar, as he's known, wins his first CC today for Anne Woodcock, who owns him in partnership with her husband Dave in Bishop Auckland. Dave also bred the dog. And strangely enough, the Golden is a very long-lived breed, so that is quite uh, an effort. Uh, he pushed aside his seven-year-old sire, who won the Open class. Uh, he's got classic lines already and must have delighted his breeder. I've got a very soft spot for Goldens and watch them as often as possible. Andy, the Cocker Spaniel, is two and a half. Show champion Perry Tree Sun Dreamer, he beat 350 others to take best of breed for owner Jackie Rowland. Now, you may remember having seen him in our Crufts preview program when he was a model for Peggy Grayson, talking about how she judges. He lives in Hawley, Surrey, and this is his biggest win to date. Indeed. And he's got a lot of time to reach his real prime because he's only two and a half year old. And isn't it splendid to see that red coat? Time was when the majority of Merry Cockers were red, but only two years ago we saw a glorious black in the top slot, and last year it was the turn of a blue roan. A very neat move of this dog, and in very good harmony with his handler. I like him. I think he's splendid. Very smart. Yes, Albert was the black one, wasn't it? That's right. Sandvika Crusader. Three-year-old field spaniel known as Jamie. He's a real mummy's boy, this one. Sharon Bamford from Chesterfield admits that he sleeps on her bed and takes a squeaky toy to bed with him. I mean, that's too much, isn't it? Today's his first CC, as it's been with such a lot of the dogs that we've seen this year. It's re very remarkable, isn't it? Because he's only quite a youngster. The field, of course, is longer cast than the cocker, but has distinct similarities. But this is that lovely liver colour. They do turn up in black and roan as well, but always this glossy, silky coat. And it's characterized by that unhurried stride and a surprisingly docile temperament. He's happy as living as a country boy, they tell me, never ever as a city slicker. They don't like it in the town. But Hilda Parkinson's eye was taken by another very young dog winning its third CC on the day the English Springer Spaniel, which pipped Dexter last year's reserve best in show to the group title. Ellen Vec Earthbound is his name, Dylan, 18 months old, and he made owner Jim and Elizabeth Davison's long trek from Fife in Scotland well worth the trip. Jim Davison shakes hands with Mike Gadsby, who takes the reserve with Dexter, but there's no doubt that Dylan is hugely pleased, no doubt Jim is as well, to have taken this group. What a surprise, a very young dog. And in the background, you'll see Dexter there. They've got the reserve. That's the American Cocker Spaniel for Mike Gadsby. Dylan, though, the clear winner of the group. Mike, no doubt, hugely disappointed. It's still a triumph, but he will be disappointed. And the Hungarian Vistler takes the third. That's Roos, two and a half years old for Anne and John Digby. The English setter, Sky, takes group four for Jill and Neil Kelly.
Well, it's this English Springer Spaniel, this very young dog, Dylan, who completes the lineup for the main event. <laughs> Best in show judge Leslie Page stands in the centre of the arena to welcome the first dog in a packed arena, unique atmosphere, most exciting, all the lights, everything you'd expect from the working group, the Bouvier de Flandre. From the Terrier group, it was the Welsh Terrier. The Hound group, the Afghan. From the Toy group, the Maltese. From the Utility group, the Chow Chow. And finally, Hotfoot from the Gundog group, the English Springer Spaniel into the final spot. I don't know really what you felt, Jess, but I thought this was a super lineup. There were some extraordinary choices from the groups, but uh, when you see them lined up there, don't they all look good? Most importantly, some young dogs, just like this one. Yes, just 18 months old, this. It's owned by Carrie Wilberg and Fiona Lambert. It's called Champion Canix Xena. It's a bitch, of course. Comes from Cricklade in Wiltshire. From the Terrier group, of course, we had that gorgeous Welsh Terrier, champion Saradon Forever Young. Judith Averis and David Scorthorn's two-year-old dog bred by David. Showing typical Terrier temperament there. Something's caught his eye. Will the Afghan catch the judge's eye? Sir Clowey's standing ovation, four years old Ebony, owned by Diana Greenfield from Wargrave in Berkshire, made into a champion in the Hound group today. Typical Afghan, vain and mad as a hatter, says Diana. From the toy group, the Maltese champion, it's either Sabador or Sabrador, Whitetail Express, Teddy, whatever. A six-year-old owned by Greta Franklin. And this is Greta's first show dog, so quite an achievement. The Chow Chow now, another surprise package, just 16 months old. Tao Suchet is the mistress. She's known as Cher. She's owned by Karen Bolam from Plymouth. Cher won her crown, she says, in just four weeks. Well, made into a champion on Utility Day. At just 18 months old, Ellen Vec Earthbound, the English Springer, Dylan from the Gundog Group, owned by Jim and Elizabeth Davidson, and of course bred by them too. A roar from the crowd there. Well, Leslie Page wasted no time. It was very deliberate. He went straight over. The Welsh Terrier took it. I won't say it was a surprise. Any one of those dogs looked good enough to me, Jess. This is such a super Welsh, though. It's had a fantastic year in 1997. And the Chow Chow got the reserve, and that was uh, everyone was thrilled with that. Just looked better and better every time you saw her right through the competition. Did indeed. The Welsh Terrier, Mel, just two years old, and the Chow Chow, just 16 months old. What moments for their owners. And that really wraps it up from Crofts for this year. We really hope you've enjoyed our coverage. And we'll definitely be back next year for Crofts 1999. We do hope you'll join us then. But until then, from Peter, from me, and from all of the team here, bye-bye.